Welcome everyone. We'll be starting um, our quadratics uh, unit for grade 11U. Um, the first uh, few lessons are just going to be reviewing quadratic functions from grade 10. So today we're just going to look at the different forms of a quadratic, whether it be the equation or a table of values or a graph, and identifying whether it's a quadratic or not, and different key features of the quadratic. So let's start. Our first example here is to indicate whether the given function is linear, quadratic, or neither. Remember to determine if it's linear, quadratic, or neither. We're looking at the degree of our independent variable and our dependent variable. So if the independent variable has a degree of 2 and the dependent variable has a degree of 1, we know this is a quadratic. The independent variable here is of degree one. The independent, the depend, independent is one, and the independent is one. Dependent is one. Sorry. Therefore, this is linear. If the degree is of two, so this is our independent, so of degree two, the dependent is degree one. This will be quadratic. From a table of values. We can determine it from finding, remember, our first differences and second differences. That just means if the independent variable is increasing or decreasing by the same value, and the, um, we look at the differences between our dependent variable. As you can see in this example, as we do the differences here, that's what difference means. When we subtract, we get the same or a constant value here. And if the first differences are the same, it's linear. So let's try these other examples. I notice that the independent is increasing by the same amount. So I'm just gonna find the difference here in the in the dependent, so negative three subtract three would be negative six, negative two, two, and six. I notice these are not the same, so I know it is not a linear function, and that is our first differences. Then we'll look at the second differences. When I subtract these, Negative six subtract a negative two would be negative four. Negative two subtract negative two is negative four. Two subtract six is negative four. I notice the second differences are the same. Therefore, this is quadratic. Our last table of values, let's do the first differences. When we do the first differences, first off, you always check these are going up by the same value. They're going up by two. When I subtract here, 8 subtract 10, 6 subtract 8, and 4 subtract 6, I notice that this is constant, so therefore this is linear. If you did the second differences and they're not constant, then you would just state that they are neither. So we have that up here. It could be neither. The same with the equations. So that is for an equation and a uh, table of values, identifying um, if it's linear or quadratic. The next we're gonna look at is just properties of the parabola. And we know this is the shape given when we plot a quadratic function. So we're just looking to be able to identify from the graph different characteristics of that graph. So the vertex, remember the vertex is that very low or top point or where the graph changes direction. So this is our vertex. The vertex is a point, so we need to write the coordinates of that. So it'd be negative one and four. The domain. So we've studied the domain a bit this year. Remember those are the X values. So we know the domain for any parabola is all real numbers the range. So when looking at the range, we recognize that all the values of our uh, of the dependent variable or the y values are all less than 4. So we know the range here is y is less than or equal to 4. Does this open up or down? 
Remember, this is a sad face, so this is down. The axis of symmetry is the line that divides our parabola. Remember, this is a vertical line, divides our parabola into equal parts, and we're just looking for the x value. So we know it is x is equal to negative 1 is the axis of symmetry. X-intercepts are where the parabola crosses the x-axis, and we notice these are our x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts are negative 3 and 1. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So we're looking right here is where it crosses the y-axis. So this is our y-intercept. And our y-intercept is at 0 and 3. Max or min value. First. Since this is opening down, we know that the y values reach a maximum point of 4. So we have a max equal to 4. Now, how do we write the equation given the graph? So you have to remember the different forms of the equation for vertex um, factored in standard form. So vertex form, remember, is y is equal a x minus h squared add k. So the parameters that we need to know from the graph are our a value, our h value, and the k value. So we'll start off with the equation. We know it's y is equal. If it's opening downward, we have to remember that the a is negative. Find the a value from the graph. We're just going back to our step properties, and if we go over one and down one, we know the a will be equal to one. So we know our a value here is one. We don't need to write the one because we're really just multiplying one by the bracket, x. Now we have to identify the h value. Remember the vertex is your h and your k. And we've already stated the vertex here to be negative 1 and 4. So we're going to be substituting in a negative 1 for our h value. When I substitute in a negative 1 here, it will make this a positive. Add 4. That is the equation in vertex form. Standard form, Remember, those are where we identify our zeros or our x-intercepts, and it starts with this form. And this time, we're just substituting in parameters of a, r, and s. Remember, r and s are your zeros or your x-intercepts. So our equation would be y is equal. Once again, we still have the same a value, and it's opening down, so we would have a negative. We've already said what our x-intercepts is, so 1 is negative 3. But when I substitute in a negative 3 here, remember, a negative and a negative will make it x add 3. And our other x-intercept was 1. So when I substitute in the 1 here, I'll have x subtract 1. Standard form. There's a couple different ways we could find the standard form at this point. And we would do that, remember, because standard form is where we have no brackets and it's just in an expanded form. So we have a choice here. We could either expand this equation or we can expand this equation in order to um, put it into standard form. So I'm just gonna do that here. I'm gonna just do y is equal. I'm gonna leave the negative out front and then we're just going to do our FOIL. So I'm gonna go x times x for x squared, x and negative one are negative x, three and x are three x, a negative and a positive is a negative three. And remember, you'll collect your like terms here, as well as we can apply the negative at the same time. So I have a negative x squared, a negative x and a positive three x are two x's, but it's gonna be negative, so negative x. A negative and a negative will be a positive three. So this is our equation in standard form.
Okay, so that's just a review or a quick review of some of the uh, characteristics that you guys should have learned last year in grade 10. Um, the last thing we're going to do on this part of the lesson is just identify some of the characteristics, not from the graph. So here we can visually see some of these characteristics, but how do we uh, identify some characteristics from the equation? So the things we're going to look at are direction of opening, um, is the vertex a max or min? What is the actual vertex? And how many zeros? Remember zeros once again, we will be looking at our x-intercepts of the equation. So first off, if I want to know the direction of opening, as we can tell from when we did the graph, our direction of opening is related to the a value, which shows a negative directly after the equal sign. So when I come to this equation and I see there's a negative here, I know this direction of opening would be down. Is the vertex a max or a min? So if it opens down, we can even use this example. When we open down, we stated that it is a maximum value. So we know here that it will be a max because of the negative. And what is the vertex? We already learned that as well. It's your H and K. Don't forget, this is a general equation in vertex form. So we know this is our H and this is our K. So our vertex is negative three. Remember, if it comes out of the bracket, we're gonna change the sign and negative one. To determine the number of zeros, so we want to know how many times the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we're just gonna do a little sketch here. And the two things we really need to know in order to do this is just where is, what quadrant basically is the vertex in? Well, if I have a vertex of negative three and negative one, so negative three and a negative one, I know my vertex is down in this area somewhere in quadrant three. I also look to see if it opens up or down. If it has a max, that means this opens downward. So the number of zeros here would be none because it does not cross the X axis. So let's try that for another example. Once again, if I wanna know if it's opening up or down, I look right here. This is positive this time, so I know this opens up. If it opens up our parabola, that means we have a minimum value. Once again, to get my H and K value, I know my H is here is three and my K is negative two. So my vertex is three and negative two. Once again, we'll just do a little sketch to decide the number of zeros we have. Three and negative two, I come over here three and down here negative two. And I recognize this one opens upward. So therefore I would have two X intercepts. So that is a quick review on some of the um, skills from grade 10 on just some characteristics of the parabola.